Ready? Oh! Welcome to Tosh.0. I'm your host, Abby Wilson, and I'm what happens when the manic pixie dream girl gets married and puts on about 80 pounds. Tonight on Tosh, the dark night rises for a web redemption, but first, let's take another look at that child endangerment suit. Here's the wind-up. And here's the pitch. That's why babies don't have wheels. Let's just hope for everyone's sake that it's an abominable snow baby. What do you mean, why? Bumbles bounce! <laughs> now you know the party's getting good when somebody ends up on the roof. There you go. Stratton, go. if you're going, you gotta commit, dude. Yeah. No, Stratton, you gotta go. You want me to throw you a beer? Maybe you go. Oh, shit! I think maybe he doesn't need another beer. Maybe somebody just slipped him a roofie. Do you think they had moonshine at this barbecue? Somebody better call the auto parts store. I don't think Billy Ray is going to make it in today. Alright. Who doesn't like monkeys? Ah, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm guessing this guy doesn't like monkeys. Jesus Christ! I'm curious, George will cut a bitch. Don't they know better than to trust a monkey that's scaling a building? <laughs> I'm not even sure if I should show you this next clip, but uh, what's the internet for if it's not close up and hairless? That is not how I expected that video to end. Let's put 20 seconds on the clock and see how many funny comments we can make. I don't know about you, but I think I just found the G spot. Is the other eye brown? Is this what they mean about the third eye giving you special abilities? Would a finger bang leave you third eye blind? Or would that just be Three Stooges fetish porn? I think Freddy just got fingered. So, Wiley e. Coyote's latest strategy for catching the Roadrunner? Hosting a raid. Uh, he's in for a big letdown when he realizes that, like everything else, ecstasy is not effective on Roadrunners. I like the flannel shirt. Say, does anybody know what Beck has been up to since the Scott Pilgrim soundtrack? You know, I bet he's on Team Jacob. This is Max. The guy in the white shirt he Max makes a living dressing as a giant bat and fighting crime. Or possibly committing it, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, Los Angeles is a pretty rough town. Every year thousands of people move there, and every year thousands of people move right back into their parents' basements. It's hard to get a job when the greatest accomplishment you have thus far is being the second lead in your high school's production of Once Upon a Mattress. Hollywood eats its young, and the competition is fierce, so it's inevitable that some people will end up in the seamy underbelly that is street performance. And you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than Hollywood Boulevard itself, where actors and hobos dress in homemade costumes and take pictures with tourists for money. Oh, wait, how the f*** did that get up there? <sighs> the Hollywood characters who work their way in everything from zombie movies to late night TV. But they still managed to get banned by the man for a few months last summer. So, like old ladies to a Tom Jones concert, they migrated to Vegas where nothing is illegal. Max works in the hot sun all day, wearing black with a leather cape and a rubber hood. It's basically a crackpot crockpot. So when some guy started some trouble with the caped crusader, 
Max brought it Gotham style. So here he is via Skype, the man who went bat in the bat suit, Max. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, Max, tell us about that day. What happened? Well, I mean, it was just, uh, I was working like usual, and uh, he came up out of nowhere and, uh, well, that's just uh, punched me for uh, no reason whatsoever. No reason at all, huh? So what was going through your head that day? I mean, other than his fist. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I knew the police were, uh, were like, on their way. So, uh, yeah, I was trying my best not to fight. Because that's what everybody just told me when I first got here. It's no fighting, so, yeah. Wait, you're saying that's you trying not to fight? Well, um, it is. The body looks kind of spasmatic. I even I got to do that one, so, but, uh, yeah. Well, your crane technique is pretty good, but I think your crouching tiger might need some work. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the biggest trouble with it uh, that I had during the fight is the cake. Um, the cake, yeah, is very heavy and very awkward to fight in, and of course, when it kept getting in the way. So, yeah, the, the cake is probably the biggest uh, drawback that I had during the fight. So, villains have better work uniforms. Good to know. Have you heard anything from that guy since? Uh, actually, no. I've been calling this guy out for about six months now. And he has not uh, commented. He hasn't got in touch with me. He just uh, said, I'm still trying to call him out. <laughs> and he won't show up. So, I... Is there anything you want to say to him now? Uh, yeah, why are you hiding? Yeah, you can leave me. I mean, yeah, you beat me last time. It's been there, yeah. Just, you know, get back into the rematch with no tape, no cops, and no excuses, okay? Come on, give it a shot. But yeah, uh, to all the people out there, you know, on, on the YouTube, you know, I greatly apologize for everything. Well, that is easily the most sincere apology I've heard since Mel Gibson. I'm definitely the hero that, uh, Las Vegas speed, but, uh, you know, it's not the one they deserve. <laughs> well, and there you have it. We'll be right back with more videos of people trying to impress someone who's probably not going to be impressed. But first...